guys may know her from Steel Magnolias. You may know her from Fried Green Tomatoes. You also may know her from Orange is the New Black. Please give a very warm welcome to Constance Schulman. <laughs> want to tell a story because I'm not a great storyteller so but what I did want to do is I did uh, spend about nine years writing something and um, and it's about me growing up and I wanted to read some of that to you all I'm from East Tennessee and um, this is sort of a year in 1968 um, and they're just little sort of vignette things. Please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. This is Agnes Gadberg, my sixth grade teacher. No one wants to. We are tired of standing. No one knows the words. Tracy Stitz chanting devil thoughts about Miss Gadberg. He's the only sixth grader with a mustache. <laughs> we have a field trip to Pet Dairy. I went there last year and the year before. If I hear about pasteurization one more time, I'll start mooing. <laughs> Listen up for bus partners. Please not Tracy Stitt or John Harmon or Pat Morrison or Tom Ronald or anyone whose last name begins with an N or Florence Powell. No eating on the bus, no spitting out the window, no paper airplanes, stay in your seats. Tracy, sit down now. The bus driver has a wad of pink bubble gum stashed behind his ear. Put those lunches away. Keep those voices down. Hands to yourself. Who threw that? Somebody's egg salad is stinking up the bus. <laughs> We're here. Take your belongings with you. Line up by the big plastic cow. Tracy Stitt, get off that big plastic cow. <laughs> this being my third trip to Pet Dairy, I can say without hesitation, the cows do not appear happy here. They're standing around with nothing to do. And everybody's wearing pet dairy hats and winking at us because we're a school group, but I'm not buying it. The lady with her wig slipping says if we all pay attention, we'll get a buster bar at the end of the tour. And I'm thinking, what about a nutty buddy? But then she says real loud, if it's pet, and we all yell back, you bet. Then she puts on a film about where milk comes from and it's all going fine about life on the farm until the projector freezes, just stops right there on this little cow with his legs up in the air and this hot poker on his skin. And the lady's trying to fix the projector and I think she should just pull the plug out of the wall, but that doesn't occur to her. So we all just sit there staring at this little cow. If it's pet, you bet. Tracy Stitt dropped his pet dairy hat in, his giant, in the giant churn machine, and pet dairy management had to shut the whole system down. And Miss Scadberg is making threats that seem extreme. Everybody go sit on the ground right now. I don't care if the bus isn't coming for an hour. Just sit there and do nothing. <laughs> Tracy asked if he could still have his buster bar. Okay, so that was Miss Scadberg, my teacher. Okay. Okay, we had turtle derbies in East Tennessee. Not only is it 100 degrees in this gymnasium, it's at least 110 degrees. And unfortunately, something's wrong with the turtles. <laughs> they won't move, they're just sitting there like little green statues. <laughs> Lenorma said turtles are stupid, but Lenorma's stupid for saying that. Lenorma's not stupid, but I'm concerned about the turtles. Something peculiar about their small feet, and I'm beginning to think they're under a spell. Lenorma keeps fanning and blotting, but nobody told her to wear support hose. I'm about to pass out, she said, let's go. Well, I'll get you a Coca-Cola. You want a Coca-Cola? All right, get me a Coca-Cola, but then we're leaving. I'm gonna get a Baby Ruth. You want a Baby Ruth? Now, you know I don't want a Baby Ruth eating caramel in this heat. <laughs> Lenorma pulled out a damp napkin and started waving around hot air. 
I excused myself over people's overgrown feet and their big gulp drinks spilled all over the bleachers and that one man in his Go Buccaneers t-shirt cursing because he's fed up with the turtles. Well, I'm fed up too, but you don't hear me complaining. <laughs> Down at the bottom of the steps, I get a closer look into the turtle derby ring. Because one thing about turtles is you need to see their expressions. And what I see is a lack of enthusiasm. <laughs> and a dissatisfaction with the working conditions. <laughs> For example, the long wooden pole that prods them in the back, that could be dropped from the agenda. And a request for fresher lettuce was also discussed. Well, concessions sold out of drinks and the only candy bar left was a payday and there's no point in making that choice. So Lenorma and I left. She told me in the car that this was her last year going to the Derby and her last year doing other things as well. And I asked her what other things and she said it was none of my business. That's what I mean about Lenorma being hateful. I forgot to tell you, Lenorma, she was like um, our maid growing up. So the, the story is really about the little girl and her maid. So, okay, this one's called Mary. So Lenorma said they hung it right there on Main Street. And I said, hung what? And she said, the elephant. And I said, when did they hang an elephant? And she said, 50 years ago. And I said, why would they hang an elephant? And she said, because good ideas are hard to come by. <laughs> so I said, well, how did they hang the elephant? And she said, with a railroad crane. And I said, was the elephant hurt? And she said, you're missing the point. <laughs> then Lenorma said, the elephant dangled in the air. And I said, for how long? And she said, long enough. And then Lenorma said they sold her tusks as souvenirs. And I said, the elephant was a girl? And she said, yes, her name was Mary. And I said, Mary what? And she said, elephants don't have last names. And I said, well, that should be against the law. <laughs> and then Lenorma said she forgot to pick up mint jelly and we have to go back to Wright's Grocery. And I said, the next time you ask me to run an errand, I will politely say no. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to read a couple more. Um, okay. Uh, okay. And I wouldn't say that I'm well-liked in school. No, I wouldn't phrase it like that. Catching the ball, throwing the ball, dodging the ball, hitting the ball, kicking the ball. The ball is the key to happiness. I hate the ball. <laughs> that was elementary school to me. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Dodo passed away in her sleep. Lenorma left early to pray for her soul. I asked my mother about Dodo's soul and she agreed that that was a troubling thought. We ate at Peerless Steakhouse because my mother doesn't cook unless it's Sunday and we have Rice Krispies. <laughs> However, Peerless puts peas in their salad and nobody knows why. Miss Juanita, away from the dessert bar, she does my mother's hair, makes her cry every time because it looks terrible. And we tell her it doesn't look terrible, but it most certainly does. And that continues until her next appointment with Miss Juanita. Everybody's just chewing and picking the peas out of their salad. And if no one wants to talk, then where does that leave us? My mind wanders to Lenorma and how she told me once that Dodo slept with her eyes open. And that situation now is of great concern. Did Dodo see herself die? My breathing's trying to catch up with my heart. It's trying to catch up with my mind. It's just trying to catch up. Driving myself crazy is no longer a hobby. So Lenorma made me go see Dodo at the funeral home. I said I wouldn't go if Dodo's eyes were open. And she said somebody sewed them shut. And I said that was the worst thing I've ever heard and I'm definitely <laughs> not going now. <laughs> of course, sometimes plans happen without your consent. 
Appalachian Hartman Funeral Home smelled like something that smelled like something else, like maybe my swimmer's ear medicine. <laughs> a front sitting room had a small table with two guest books, one for Gracie Lancaster and the other for Dodo Morrison. Lenorma signed Dodo's guest book. I did too. It took me five tries to get my signature right, and Lenorma t told me to hurry up, and I said, why? Dodo's not going anywhere. <laughs> and then I peeked over at Gracie Lancaster's book, and she only had one signature, so I signed her book as well, and Lenorma shook her head like adults do when they're beyond exasperated. <laughs> Happy Hans Hartman, he's the proprietor of the Appalachian Hartman Funeral Home, led us down this wood-paneled hallway with his oversized head, muttering how sorry he was for our loss. He stopped outside Dodo's room and said, if we needed anything, don't hesitate to ask. We did hesitate when we saw the framed photo of Dodo on the door. She looked like someone had swindled her out of a million dollars, like all sullen and serious and mean. And Lenorma asked, how come they couldn't find a better photograph of Dodo? And nobody answered. And I guess that was the answer. So Lenorma slowly walked in, and there was Dodo, lying in her casket on this red velvet fabric, dressed in a navy blue traveling suit, like she was going to Miami for a vacation, like she was the stewardess or something, like she had just come out of the oven, <laughs> cooling off at room temperature. Now, don't you touch her, Lenorma said. They put chemicals on her skin and God knows what else. I don't want to touch her. Why would I want to touch her? I'm just saying. Well, I don't want to. All right, then. Lenorma pulled out her Bible, the one with the zipper, and started mumbling about shepherds. I took deep breaths because somebody forgot to put any air in the funeral room, and Lenorma told me to stop breathing like that. And I realized Dodo looked more terrible than I first thought, and she didn't look good alive. <laughs> but whoever put that green eyeshadow on her sunken eyelids need to come to some serious grips. <laughs> and I began to wonder if Dodo understood the ramifications. And then it dawned on me how tiresome being a neck can be because mine was starting to buckle under the pressure from my head. <laughs> Never underprepare for seeing a dead person. They don't wake up. And they don't move or blink or inhale and their expression stays exactly the same and they have no opinion <laughs> and could care less that they're def Form toes are sticking out of their stocking feet because someone forgot to put on a good pair of walking shoes. And they don't listen, which is rude. <laughs> Dodo wasn't listening, but at times it looked like she agreed. And for the future, I would recommend other options to this particular venue, like somewhere with a recliner and a nice selection of beverages. I've heard you can give your eyes to another person after you're dead, somebody who's blind or lost an eye, and whoever gets Dodo's eyes won't get a wink of sleep. <laughs> Dodo hasn't moved one inch this whole time. I realize she has been carved out of soap. And there's nowhere to lean except on Lenorma, who cautioned me twice already to stand still. And I thought I saw Dodo wink at me. <laughs> I can't hold up my head. I don't feel good. Oh, you feel fine. No, I don't. I'm going to faint. Give me your hand. Well, Lenorma had to carry me out because she said I look green, and green doesn't look good on anybody. So we went to the Dairy Queen since my blood sugar was low, and Dodo always enjoyed their dilly bars anyway. We sat and shared a banana split. Lenorma said, Dodo's with Jesus now. And I looked out the window and I saw clouds shaped like nothing, just pillows. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. Yum's the word.